I'm going to be playing around with uh, parameters in the uh, cut to see if I can't figure out what the best um, cut height and uh, speed, cut speed, are for this particular material, which is 11 gauge, <clears throat> which is not in the cut charts. So I've got this piece of plate. I've made sure that it's you know nice and steady on the slats, but I've also mapped out um, a, a couple of locations. I, I set the uh, dial indicator uh, on the carriage and I assumed zero was always here. And then I allowed it to traverse. And you can see that uh, in the middle, it's about 10 thousandths high. It gets over here, it's about 10 thousandths low. And that stays pretty consistent. Uh, I mean, it, it varies a little bit, except for when you get out here into this corner. Instead of being about uh, minus 10 thousandths, here it goes minus 7 thousandths, here it's about minus 3 thousandths. Uh, so here, it's pretty darn close to what the start is although it went up 11 thousandths in the middle. Um, that will help me as I look at the cut quality. If I see a difference between, uh, say, starting here, which is zero, and here where it was actually came up to 11 thousandths, then I'm going to try and you know, use that. If the cut quality changes here, between here and here, um, give me some clue as to you know maybe what happened. Cause if I started right here at uh, 60 thousandths above the plate, as it traversed, and I'm not going to use torch height control, I'm going to keep it at 60 thousandths. So when it actually gets here, it's actually cutting at about 49 thousandths uh, instead of 60 thousandths. So, and similarly, if we get you know somewhere over here, if I started here at 60 thousandths, uh, then here it's going to be uh, 51 thousandths. Uh, but here, now, it's going to drop down from 60,000 to 70,000. <clears throat> so again, if I see a difference between here and here, that'll give me some clue as to maybe what might have happened. So the cut path that I've set up uh, is going to move about uh, 8 inches straight. It'll go to uh, about a half-inch diameter or half-inch rate, uh, actually a half-inch I don't know if that is a half inch radius or half inch diameter. I guess it's a half inch diameter. Um, and then it'll come back about an inch. The, uh, and, and it'll do that. There's going to be 12 total cuts. I'm going to go in 50 thousandths, 60 thousandths cut height, 70 thousandths cut height, and 80 thousandths cut height. And for each one of those cut heights, I'll go with a, a speed, a cut speed of uh, 125, 150, and 175. So the first three will be 50 thousandths at 125, 150, and 175. And it'll repeat for each of those four different cut heights. Now I've had to go in and modify the, uh, um, my settings because if you remember, um, the settings will look at the torch speed, and if it's below some parameter, then it will, you know, actually, I think that's only if I'm using torch height control. I'm not using torch height control here, uh, so uh, that's probably not going to happen. It will, it will ignore the fact that uh, one cut is at one speed, and next cut is another speed, etc. So let's, uh, let's set this up and we'll give it a try. All right, here we go in the cut. Well, I already screwed up. No, no ground. Uh, so. Let me start it over again. All right, let's try it again. That knucklehead move, we're going to put the ground on, like uh, how many times have I ever done that? Um, as soon as I heard noise, I knew what I had done. So let's uh, kick this thing off and see if we can get a, a cut this time.
All right, sorry about the noise. I'll let the uh, compressor cut off and we'll take a look. Okay, the first thing let's do is see if we can see any difference caused by the fact that the plate changed from zero on one end, went uh, closer, essentially reduced the cut height by about 10 thousandths in the middle, and then increased the, the cut height about 10 thousandths in the end. So um, here's one location where it looks like it started, you know, a lot of dross, and then it seems like it cleaned itself up. Uh, another location, I'm not sure that there's any real strong evidence of how that, uh, that changed. Perhaps maybe here, that this little bit, although that's pretty close to the pierce, it's kind of hard to, to uh, know if it was any influence of that or not. So I guess the conclusion that I would draw based on this is that, you know, we, we went a difference of essentially uh, 10 thousandths closer and farther away along that cut. And I don't see a, a real significant difference. Um, now let's uh, talk about speed. And there's some interesting things going on here. When I'm close, when I'm at 50 thousandths, it looks like a slower speed works better than say this middle speed uh, at 150 thousandths. Although here, uh, it seemed like it, uh, it got a little better. However, remember here at zero, see how it started bad? Well, then it got closer uh, and then, you know, it got farther away. So I, it's hard to know here the influence and the relationship between the speed and, and the cut height. But as we start now getting to 60 thousandths, um, here's 60 thousandths at, at a slower speed Here's a, at 150, uh, you get a lot of dross there. But then when you get up to 60 thousandths at a, at a faster speed, it's, it looks pretty good throughout that entire cut. Um, 70 thousandths is the same kind of thing. It's not too bad uh, here at 125, but 150 got, got ugly. And then 175 got good again. So I, don't, I, I guess I don't really understand what's going on there. At a slower speed, you would think that uh, the slower speed would have more dross and the faster you went, uh, the trend should, should go that way, but it almost seems like, you know, at the middle speed, it's worse than it is either slower or faster. Uh, and then let's finally get to the uh, 80 thousandths, and, and that same trend continues. 80 thousandths at uh, 125, not real bad. 80 thousandths at 150, terrible. But 80 thousandths at 175 looks really good. So, uh, how do we conclude? Uh, I'm not sure we can conclude. What I would basically uh, probably take away from this is that my cut height is not as important as my cut speed when it comes to uh, how much dross is left. And so I would probably pick the higher speed uh, pretty much in every case. Uh, so I think for 11 gauge material, you know, I don't care if my cut height goes all the way from 50 to 80. Uh, I'm going to choose a cut speed of 175 and uh, see if that doesn't help. Now, again, this was all done without torch height controls. Now, would torch height control have accounted for this plus 10 thousandths and minus 10 thousandths? I guess I could have set my uh, uh, variation such that, uh, you know, my tolerance or, uh, you know, some of those things try and tighten that up to see if it wouldn't try and, and uh, compensate for that, I don't know what would happen. And maybe that's what I'll do in the future. But for the purpose of this video, my intent was to try and understand the cut height versus cut speed and uh, see what the influences were uh, for 11 gauge, which again is not in my cut charts. I go from 10 to 14. So now I will start cutting 11 gauge uh, at 175 inches per minute uh, and um, see if that my cut quality didn't get a little better. All right, thanks. Well, the uh, last test cut was done without torch height control because I wanted to uh, uh, see if we could um, see the difference in the uh, torch height cut height and the speed. 
I'm going to try it now with uh, torch height control on and smart voltage. If you remember what happens in smart voltage, it takes whatever cut height that you start with uh, that comes out of your post processor and you know some it goes a quarter of an inch and then goes another quarter of an inch starts sampling uh, and if it's stable that becomes the new cut height that that torch is going to try and maintain now we're going to see if we see any difference you know theoretically uh, you shouldn't because if it if it starts out with 50 thousandths and that's where the cut height is well then torch height control why don't you keep it at 50 thousandths well it shouldn't move uh, unless there's bow in the plate. So, but you know, you never know until you try. So here we go. <clears throat> ah. It might help if I take it off of dry run. All right, try it again. Okay, um, I was watching the um, torch height control, the, the panels, to see if a torch was moving up or down, and very rarely did it. It stayed pretty much okay uh, the whole time. There were a couple times when it moved it down. We're going to look here in the cut quality in a little bit. But I did notice on the nominal and the live, Depending on the cut height when it started, it was as low as like 125 and as high as about 128, depending on the, the torch height when it started its cut and became stable and it said, okay, that's going to be my nominal voltage. So let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, here's the result using uh, torch height control and uh, they're almost identical. In fact, I can't find too much of the difference. In fact, some of the trends that we saw uh, when we tr had torch height control off are, st are still there. Like here on this uh, half inch, I mean uh, 50 thousandths uh, cut height, you know, where it started looking bad and then uh, got good. This, this plate had a very similar bow. Um, but so the same trends is that regardless of what you use for cut height, whether it was 0 0.5, 0 0, you know, or you know, 50 thousandths, 60, 70, or 80 thousandths, the slower speed, 125 inches per minute, and the higher speed, 175 inches per minute, had the best quality. When you got to 150, there must be some, I won't call it a sweet spot, because it's actually not a sweet spot, it's a sour spot, uh, seems to be where you get a lot of dross. Interestingly enough, when I did my, uh, took my cut charts, and again, if I took, uh, it had a, a value of what to use for speed uh, for 10 gauge and 14. Didn't have anything for 11. So I did a simple interpolation in between and came up with 153. Well, that's, that's right where I'm getting lousy dross. 
So uh, I think what I will do now is uh, I'll move up to the higher speed uh, because that seems to be, um, regardless of whether I'm, you know, got a, a cut height that's low or high, I uh, seem to get a better uh, cut quality. So there it was without torch height control, with tor torch height control, and uh, I think uh, I have addressed where I want to use, where I want to cut 11 gauge. I'd be interested for you folks that cut 11 gauge, uh, if you're using hypertherm or not, uh, to tell me what, what your cut parameters are and see if they're anywhere close uh, uh, to what I'm seeing here. Okay, thanks. I didn't want to get away without uh, doing a direct comparison here side by side so you can see. The one on the left is without torch height control. Uh, the one on the right is with torch height control. And again, uh, they're pretty darn identical. So, uh, back to my original conclusion, I think I will use a higher cut speed uh, for this 11 gauge. All right, hey, thanks for watching. Uh, DNN Custom Creations.